Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Lowry and I am a student in the MS Ecology program here at Western. Welcome to my presentation on my thesis, Rock Climbing Impact on Soil Properties and Invasive Plant Species in the Gunnison Valley, Colorado. I would like everyone to think about what outdoor recreation looked like for you in the past and what memories stand out the most to you. For me, I know that it is taking in the wonder of the outdoors and feeling fully surrounded by the natural world. Now, think of what outdoor recreation will look like for future generations. Are there still expansive landscapes untouched for your children to enjoy? These photos show a side-by-side -side comparison of a popular climbing route, the Hulk in Bishop, California. The stark difference in vegetation cover is a sign of what is at risk in our climbing areas, damage to the natural ecosystem. This damage needs to be stopped now for the sake of our future planet. But what is the extent of this harm for rock climbing areas? And what does this damage look like here in the Gunnison Valley? Rock climbing is growing at an incredibly fast rate, roughly 12% per year. While most of this growth comes from indoor climbers, as more and more climbers venture outside, more impact can occur to our beloved climbing areas. Rock climbing has the potential to damage fragile native vegetation and soil, increase erosion, and disturb wildlife. What is the extent of this harm? To answer this question, I focused my research around two main objectives. One, native versus non-native vegetation composition and cover above ground and in the soil seed bank. And two, general soil health, such as gravimetric moisture and bulk density. Before I dive in on my own thesis, I would like to highlight some research that has already been conducted on the ecological effects of rock climbing. Firstly, vegetation. All of this research is in comparison to unclimbed cliffs. Plant species richness has been shown to be greater on cliffs with no rock climbing. In addition, individual plants decrease with increased climbing use. Spe species composition has also been shown to shift in climbing areas, suggesting threat to native plants. In terms of trampling in the soil seed bank, Long-term trampling has been shown to reduce total vegetation cover as well as shift species composition. In the same study, seeds of ruderal and unintentionally introduced species were more common in climbing areas. I would also like to highlight cheatgrass research, as my thesis has a focus on non-native plant species and cheatgrass is of great concern here in the Gunnison Valley. Cheatgrass is an invasive annual grass that has most affected the sagebrush, pinyon juniper, and salt desert communities of the western United States. Cheatgrass has a tendency to thrive in areas with heightened disturbance. In fact, even the slightest disturbance from rodents was enough to perpetuate the grass in a grazing field, as one study in 1987 found. This poses a potential problem to local rock climbing areas. Here is a map of cheatgrass reportings in the Gunnison Valley. Areas of severity are indicated by red dot markings. The black triangles show my study sites, Hartman Rocks below and Taylor Canyon in the upper right. Let's dive into my own personal thesis research. I chose to conduct my thesis project here in the Gunnison Valley in order to inform recreation management close to home. My study sites included sagebrush step and mid-elevation forest ecosystems at Hartman Rocks Recreation Area and Taylor Canyon at the first and second buttress, shown by the blue markings on the map. There are 645 total climbing routes in the valley, and I chose the most popular in order to determine disturbance. All climbing routes were chosen randomly using the guidebook Gunnison Rock by Leo Malloy. Only the highest star rated beginner and intermediate routes were used for the random selection process in order to ensure highest use. Bouldering problems were not included. To study the above ground vegetation, I used the line point intercept method along a total of 18 disturbed and 18 undisturbed 10 meter transects. 
Disturbed transects were laid out a half meter from the cliff base, and undisturbed transects were placed 10 to 15 meters away. On each transect, a pin flag was dropped every 0.2 meters along the line, resulting in 50 dropped pin locations in total. This ensures an accurate profile of the plant life along these climbing areas. To evaluate the soil properties and the soil seed bank, core samples were taken every five meters along the transect line. Cores from one transect were pooled together for analysis. Soil samples were then stored in the refrigerator until lab analysis was possible. In the lab, gravimetric moisture and bulk density measurements were conducted. And finally, to evaluate the soil seed bank, the terahertz seedling emergence method was used in the Western greenhouse. To conduct the seedling emergence study, samples were washed through a coarse and fine sieve after lab analysis. These washed samples were then poured onto individual transect trays of steam sterilized potting soil. Six trays of the steam sterilized soil stood as controls. Trays were exposed to 24 seven artificial light as well as natural sunlight coming in from the greenhouse windows. In order to avoid differences in sunlight exposure, trays were rotated weekly. In addition, watering was done every other day. Once seedlings were able to be identified, they were counted and removed. Now that I've explained my thesis methods, I would love to share my results. A total of 27 species were, in, were recorded in this study, four being non-native. This includes cheatgrass, common dandelion, crested wheatgrass, and scentless chamomile. While there was no difference in total above ground vegetation between disturbed and undisturbed areas, graminoids and shrubs were significantly more impacted in disturbed transects. Also, in an exciting result, there was no significance between the presence of these non-natives in disturbed transects in comparison to the undisturbed. This box plot shows the percent composition of species in both sites. Taylor Canyon in the left of the plot did have more non-natives in disturbed transects, but this result was not significant. This trend was not repeated in Hartman Rocks, where undisturbed plots had a higher prevalence of both native and non-native species. Soil bulk density showed a significant influence of both disturbance and site. However, in an interesting result, bulk density was actually lower in disturbed transects. In addition, the mean measurements listed in this slide are quite high. In sandy soils like these, bulk density greater than 1.8 grams per centimeter cubed has been shown to reduce plant root growth and inhibit water and airflow. This suggests that although, although there is no direct impact from climbing use, further study of soil properties and health is needed in these areas to determine indication of soil compaction and environmental quality. Gravimetric soil moisture showed no significance by either site or disturbance. The mean percentage in disturbed transects at Hartman's did show a higher value, which could be due to water runoff off the cliffs. For the seedling emergence study, there was no significance on the influence of site of seed on seedling growth. Overall, disturbed transects had significantly more growth and all of the species except for one unidentified forb. This included the non-native species cheatgrass, common dandelion, and scentless chamomile. The future of rock climbing areas depends on mitigation based on science. In order to preserve rock climbing areas, management plans need to be designed and implemented effectively. This could include trail building and maintenance, designated belay areas and platforms, and increased signage. Continued study of the impact of rock climbing on vegetation and soil properties is also crucial, as more data is needed to further the analysis of the true impact of climbing. Rock climbers and outdoor recreators need to work together with ecologists as teammates to protect beautiful ecosystems that can withstand sustainable recreation for generations. Thank you all for listening to my thesis presentation. 
I would like to acknowledge my thesis advisor, Dr. Jenny DeMarco, as well as my committee members, Dr. Robin Bingham, Laura Bagas, and Peter Horgan. Thank you to support from Western Colorado University and permits provided by the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service.